their personal life. You get a hint that they have this life. I mean, when they walk into a room, you know they've been somewhere. But you don't quite know where and what's happened. Um, but she was, you know, she was funny. Um, the girls would make me laugh a lot. Um, and although you don't really see that on screen, you do carry that relationship into a room. Because again, as I was saying with Lindsay, that intuitiveness, you know you can roll with them, you know you can trust these people. They, you know, there's a safety net constantly with them. Um, so, because you know if you fall, they're gonna pick you up in, in the same way and that's, that is the fun of acting really. Um, because it becomes like musicians just like riffing with each other. And when that happens in a scene, then it's cooking. Richard Hope, I adore Richard other. Hope. Um, he is funny. Um, he twinkles like, he and Linz actually have got this, he, <laughs> he, uh, he can just look at you and you think, I've really got to concentrate here because he's testing me. He's going, like, okay. So you think you were clever then? All right, deal with this. And um, he is supportive. Um, he, he will come and say, oh, that thing you did, that was nice. And, you know, let me, if I hand you a piece of paper in here, I think that maybe we can just throw a look that might tell us that, it'll tell the audience that we're doing this and that we're going to go this way. And so he has ideas. He does not stop working. He does not stop. So when he, feel that he felt sometimes what he was about to say didn't really tell everything, we would talk, have a coffee. If we do this, we can do, you know, throw a look here throw a reaction off of what Sam's doing there, that gives Sam somewhere to go. This is the advantage of working with, you know, really experienced, and that's what Richard is. Richard, again, has seen it all, and worked with great people. And, uh, and what's lovely about Richard is that, he, we was on set one day, and he said, I just got a call, I've got a meeting with Brian De Palma tomorrow. I went, yeah? He went, who is he? I went, Brian De Palma, it's like, have you not seen Scarface? It's Al Pacino. I now have one degree of separation between Al and me because of you. And he went, all oh, right, okay. And that's, he don't care. It's like, he don't care. So he impressed me. I'm a good actor, so what have you been doing? And that's what I like about Rich. And great to work with. Stevie. Um, <laughs> Steve had the best job in television because he, we used, we used to, um, you know, be, as you know, shooting starts early, there all day. And because Steve played our boss, he was our governor, he would turn up on Friday, do a couple of hours, then go home. Um, so he had a great, but he missed a little bit of the, just like us being all together and just. Um, so I didn't really get to know Stephen, but, um, but it helped because he is our boss, so he is detached. So when you, I want to see you in my room, it was a bit like, oh, what have I done now? Um, but again, a, a lovely man. Joey Shaw. Um, one, he's going to be a great director. I've just seen he's, he's shot his first short. And uh, he has a real eye. And he's a very good writer as well. Um, so in between setups we would talk movies and um, just talk the story and, and again like all the guys you're trying to right, well, what can we do to make this scene breathe what, what can we do what looks can we throw there was one um, Sam she has a pop at me and calls me a Neanderthal basically that I'm dragging my knuckles on the ground and Jerry just threw me a banana and there's me thinking you were a strategically shaved monkey catch a banana. He thought of it, you know, it's like, and it's captured, it's on screen, and that's, that's an act of thinking. Um, and that's what he would do. And as I say, I, in him, I, I saw that straight away that we were gonna have a good partnership. Uh, and I, when he does get killed, I was really upset. I was really upset, because <laughs> I sort of lost like, my mate. And there's a, there's a scene where his jacket is just over his, because in the, the office setup, 
we sit at the same desk. And his jacket is just over the chair. And you, you do actually feel something. When Sam's in with um, Spacey, um, Pacey rather, trying to you know, say what happened and why it happened. And, um, you know, I had a real feeling of loss when he, when he was taken out of that. Jackie Morton, because she was, she's the real deal. Um, she was the first woman to break through in her rank and in a, in a career that is essentially dominated, what is dominated by men. So not only has she got to be good at her job, she's got to be very good at her job because she's proving herself as well. So that when you, when I was not sure about how I would approach um, a scene with my authorities, as it, you know, the people that are actually over me, and how how far I could push it, um, she was great, and she was like, you could ring her, at, you know, any time of the day. Like, I'm not sure about this, and how should I approach this, and what would be because just a, because the nature of filming today is very there's not that much time to do your homework. And although I went out with the, the real guys, um, I met um, Stevie at MIT. I had, a, I had to get, I went to the real MIT buildings in one section of London. And uh, I rang, I said, I can't even find your building. I said, this is like not boding well for a detective. He said, no, you're not supposed to find us that easy. Uh, and just, talking to them and seeing how they deal with their lives outside. Because for, for me as an actor, the most important thing was what affects my mood in the office? What has happened outside? What have I had to deal with? So you have to build that up yourself. And so talking to Jackie, you could build that up. You know, how far can I push it on the street? When I, when there's a, you know, when I pull up in a car and I want to talk to a guy and I put him up against the wall and say, look, I want to talk to you. How far can I push it? How far can I go without getting some sort of comeback? And she would tell me. Um, and what rules do they break and get away with? Because at the end of the day, they're dealing with criminals. And part of the romantic notion of being a criminal, because there is a romantic, you know, of a genre in movies, gangster movies, you know, there are some actors that built a career just playing gangsters because there is this, oh, yeah, because they, there's no rule. They, they have no rules. There's no edge. You do what you do. And cops have to deal with that, but they've got an edge because there's going to be a comeback because these guys can play that and get off. And it's not just getting off with robbery or getting off with, it's getting off with murder. You can murder another human being, and if the cops don't play it right, you're screwed. So that's where she was great. Um, and she would encourage, and she would say, no, no, no go with that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, go with that. Or no, no that you, you can't push that. Um, so she was essential for me. Um, I know that the girls, obviously, because she's a woman, and she's had to do that. Um, probably had a different approach, but I, she was just like a touchstone to what it really is. Because we, you know, I'm playing it, you know, I'm not a cop. But I want to, having met the guy, there was a guy called Steve I met, and they'd worked on, one of the cases that we work on is a child death, a murder. And I said, how do you deal with that? I said, like, you've got kids, and you deal with, they find a child that's been murdered. And he said, you cut off. There is no emotion. You do the job, you deal with the family. Your first 48 hours are very important because literally it's, it's slipping away from you. So you've got to, that first 48 hours are essential that you get something down. And he said, and you, you close that down, you close you down to deal with the job. And he told me that he was dealing on a case where he had to deal with a child death, dealt with a family dealt with aunts, uncles, fathers, dealt with all that, went to the end of the case, 
found who had actually done it. He remembers walking into his house, um, having finished, and this is like after days and days and days of work, and he put the, the key in the door, opened the door, and as he opened the door, his little four-year-old run down and just wrapped his legs around his, uh, his arms around his legs and said, hello, Daddy. And he said, I just cried. I just cried. And he said, and that's when it happened. That's when you release it. And that's where Jackie was important for me because she showed me that. She showed what I can bring into a room that's happened outside. Um, so she was very important. My glover, um, I met first, we had a dinner, and uh, Michael's Australian, and very rock and roll, and had a very specific idea of what he wanted to do. Uh, and when I first met him, um, I was wearing a suit, I was a bit dressed like this, and he said, so, do you always wear a suit? I said, well, I've dug holes for a living, so this is a chance to actually dress up and come to work. And uh, we sort of like got on from that point. And he went, all right, okay. And uh, he was encouraging, he would encourage impro. Um, and he said, just do it, I will catch it. If you're going to throw a look, I will catch it. Um, and if I don't like it, I won't use it. But if I like it, I'll keep it. So again, he created that safety net where you know you can, you can go with things. Um, uh, he was just, he was fun to work with. He was direct and sometimes quite blunt. Um, and because of that, he was great to, he was great to deal with uh, because I knew where I was with him. The first time I met Sue Tully, funny enough, was on the set of The Bill, and I was playing an international gangster being interviewed by two cops. And the best giggles in this game are when you're supposed to be really serious. And I was being interviewed by a guy uh, called Len. And uh, he had to, in this very serious interview scene, say to me, all right, Mr. Wilde, I've seen what you've got in your hand. Now I'm going to show you what I've got in mine. And for some reason, that would make me laugh, like, big time. And I'm like, I'm crying. And we were laughing so much. I mean, the director had lost all hope. Sue Tully was shooting down the hall. She had to come down to find out what was going on. That was the first time I met Sue. So, like, a couple of years later, we then meet again. She remembered that occasion. And uh, Sue, again, had a very definite idea of how Trevor was in relation to Sam and Lindsay and the whole setup. And she had very set ideas of what she wanted to shoot. It was almost, um, I read once that Hitchcock just drew pictures of every scene, so he knew exactly what the shot was going to be. And there was no variation on that. And so Sue was very, she knew exactly what she wanted, which is great for an actor as well, rather than, well, we'll see. She was like, no, this is what I want to achieve. I want to achieve that. And, um, and she was great fun to work with. And also, it's only the, the second female director I'd ever worked with. I shot a film in Cyprus called Bar um, with a female. And, it was, it, it was a, just a different relationship. Um, so that, again, was very interesting for me. And she was fantastic to work with. Um, but it was, it was exciting and, you know, I knew I was part of a great cast. There's, you know, Richard Hope, there's Richard Hughes, some really good guys. And uh, I was up for it.